Hey guys, it is so good to see you today. It is Sunday morning and we are looking again into the Word of God. Have you ever read anything in the Word of God that maybe didn't quite make sense to you? Maybe you read the words or the verse or maybe even you heard the story and it just didn't quite make sense. Maybe even you've heard me teach before and I've shared something and you're like, I don't get it, Pastor Ken. Hey, listen, that happens to all of us. The Word of God isn't always easy to understand. Now, there, there are big parts of it that are easy to understand. Like when the Bible says in the Old Testament, in the Ten Commandments, do not steal. Okay, that's not a hard one to understand. We can understand that. Or other parts of the Bible. We've talked many times about the verses in the Old Testament where God says to Joshua or to Gideon or to others, be strong and courageous. Hey, that's pretty easy to understand. But there are those verses or chapters or areas of the Bible that are a little bit difficult to understand. Have you ever, have you ever looked in the book of Revelation? It's at the very end of your Bible. Oh man, Revelation. Some of that book is hard to understand. You have to really study it to get it. There's books in the Old Testament, like even Daniel. The first half of the book of Daniel, man, that's easy to understand. We can read the stories and see what God is trying to say there. But the second half of the book of Daniel, that's more difficult to understand. Well, you're not the only one who has felt that way. I've felt that way at times. I'm sure Pastor Todd has felt that way too. Your parents have felt that way. But even people who were living at the time of the Bible felt that way about some of the things that Jesus said. So open your Bibles with me to the book of John in the New Testament, the book of John chapter 6. The book of John chapter 6. Remember in the New Testament it goes Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. The fourth book, John chapter 6. People have been following Jesus around. He's been teaching, he's been healing, he's been doing miracles, and people have been following around. And as he's doing those things, he's sharing with them about the kingdom of God. He wasn't just healing people, he was also talking to them about God and telling them about how they can have a relationship with God. And he had so many people following him. You've heard the story of the feeding of the 5,000. The 5,000 in that story is just men. We're talking, in addition, women and children. There could have easily been 10,000 to maybe even 20,000 people who were there, and he fed all of them. But as these people were following around, Jesus got a little concerned. Because the question was, are you following Jesus because you want to see a miracle or because you want to learn about God? Are you following Jesus because you're hoping he'll give you something for free, like a free meal? or because you want to learn something about God. And so here in today's story, Jesus is going to say some things that are hard to understand or that people don't want to listen to. Let, let me read with you. I'm in John chapter 6, verse number 26. It says, Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate the fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but the food that endures to eternal life. And he goes, look, you're following after me because you got fed. You got a good free meal. Now listen, I got to be honest. If there was a guy around here who was traveling, doing miracles and other things, and everywhere he went, he produced this food like stone fire or rattlers, or I, I've been on this recent kick, like uh, Jersey Mike's or Del Taco. Man, if this guy was handing out this stuff, there would be a lot of people following him. He'd be like, man, just go listen to this guy and you get free food. Jesus goes, that's not right. You need food that lasts more than just the moment. You need the bread of life. Have you ever heard of the bread of life? Like, can you go to Walmart and go to the bread section and go, Let's see, uh, there's this kind, there's this kind, sourdough, wheat, oh, bread of life, two ninety nine. dollars No, there, there's no bread like that there, and there wasn't a bread like that here in the, in the New Testament. What is Jesus talking about, this bread of life? 
Well, look down a couple verses further. It says, verse 32, Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to this world. Verse 35, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Okay. He says, he, he goes back to Moses for a moment. He says, remember Moses. Moses, when Moses was here, you had bread from heaven. Do you remember what that was? Think for a moment. Every day, the people of Israel, on, on their exodus out of the land of Egypt, every day they would come outside and there would be bread on the ground. Can you remember what that bread was called? Give you a minute. Hmm, what was that bread called? It started with the letter B. No, it didn't. It started with the letter M. It started with the letter M. Ma. Ma. Ma, 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 manna. Manna. You remember the manna. The Bible said it was little like wafers of bread. It was white and it tasted like honey. And God provided that for his people all the time. But Jesus says, you need a better bread from heaven. You need a bread that will feed you eternally. And he says, I am the bread of life. Now that is a weird statement. That's totally a weird statement. And you're like, Pastor Ken, you're saying Jesus made weird statements? Yeah, that was a weird statement. If you or I walked up to someone and said, Hi, my name's Ken. I'm the bread of life. You'd be like, uh, I'm the milk of life. I'm the Pepsi of life. I am the tacos of life. People wouldn't understand that. But Jesus isn't just saying crazy things, okay? Jesus didn't do that. He may have said things people didn't understand, but he didn't say crazy things. What does he mean when he says, I am the bread of life? Well, again, look at what it says. I say to you, but I said to you, that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of my Father who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Listen, bread, what does bread do? Well, in our world, bread is just one of the many foods that we eat. But in the world of the Bible, the New Testament world, bread was one of the main foods that they would have eaten. It was cheap, it was easy to buy, or it was easy to make. Bread was a big deal. And that bread that they would eat to keep them alive, Jesus is saying, I am like that. I'm the bread from heaven. I'm the one who sustains you, who helps you to keep going, who gives you life, who keeps you alive. And I'm not expensive, okay? I'm not rare in the sense that, uh, like, really difficult to get to. I'm here for you. You can find me. You can have me. You can eat of me. You're like, that's weird. It is weird. It is weird. But that's what Jesus says. Look at what it says. Okay, they grumbled, verse 41, the Jews grumbled about him because he said, I am the bread of love, bread that came down from heaven. And they said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How did he say, I have come down from heaven? Okay, people start getting mad. One, they're mad because he said, some of you are only following me for a free meal. Two, they're like, oh, he came down from heaven? I remember his mom and dad. Okay, I grew up with his mom and dad, Mary and Joseph. He did not come from heaven. He came from his mom and dad. Now, these people didn't know the full story, the story that we know, the Christmas story the, of the virgin birth, that Jesus' father wasn't Joseph. Jesus' father is God. Okay, so there's all these things, and they're grumbling, and they're like, man, that's a little rude. Hey, listen, you might feel the same way. If you're sitting next to someone here at church or hopefully soon in school, and they're like, yeah, I wasn't born. I came down from heaven. You'd be like, this guy is crazy. He didn't come from heaven. I heard his mom, he was born over at Henry Mayo Hospital. 
They, he didn't come from heaven. But they don't know the full story of Jesus. And so now they're like, oh man, Jesus is saying some of us, some of us only follow him for the food. I mean, it's true, but that's rude. Now he's saying he's from heaven. And look at what it says. Truly, truly, I say unto you, I'm in verse, I'm in verse 53. Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Okay, that also is really weird. That's weird. He goes, hey, if you don't eat the, the flesh of the Son of Man, that's him. And if you don't drink my blood, you won't have eternal life. Okay, if you were sitting next to someone in class and they said, dude, you got to eat my flesh. <laughs> you got to drink my blood. You'd be like. Oh my goodness, teacher, teacher, can you, ch can you change my seat? This is, this is so weird. Okay, that, that's not a normal thing. But again, Jesus had a reason for what he was saying, and he wasn't saying what they thought he was saying. He had another meaning to it. He was saying, I'm going to give my life for you, my flesh for you. I'm going to shed my blood for you. And just like I give my life, my flesh, and I shed my blood. You have to accept that. Not eat it in a gross, weird sense. You have to accept that to become a Christian. And what he was also talking about was communion. We have communion here at our church. Now, in communion, we have a piece of bread and we have grape juice. It's not anyone's actual flesh and it's not blood. But it reminds us of the flesh and the blood of Jesus that he sacrificed for us. So now people are going, oh, man, this guy, I thought, I thought he was great. Now he's saying crazy stuff. He's doing crazy talk. Look what happens to some of these people. It says this, verse number 66. It says, after this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. Now, when we think of disciples, we think of the 12 disciples. We think of Peter and James and John and Thaddeus and those guys. It's not talking about the 12 disciples. A disciple was just a follower of someone, someone who would follow someone else around and learn from them. So Jesus had a lot of followers, thousands of followers. But some of them, when they heard these things, said, that's weird, that's too hard, I don't understand that, I'm out of here. And they left. And they didn't come back. Listen, the same thing happens today sometimes in church. In church, sometimes people hear things from the Bible and they go, look, I, I don't understand that. That, that. that doesn't make sense. I'm out of here. I'm not coming back. Or sometimes in church, and I think this happens even more, people hear things they don't want to hear. They, they hear like, oh man, I can't like cheat on my taxes. That's stealing. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm not coming back. And they leave. And listen, they, they miss out on Jesus. You miss out on Jesus. And so for us today, listen, when we read something in the Bible that we don't understand, it doesn't mean it doesn't make sense. We just have to figure it out. Sometimes that takes time, but it's good to do. Or when we read things in the Bible and we're like, oh, that's a hard statement. I don't know if I like that. It's okay. We have to figure it out and obey it and trust that it's true. When we come to church and we either un don't understand things or maybe we hear things that we don't want to hear, it's okay. You keep following God. You keep trusting Him. You keep obeying His Word and doing what's right. And He will help you to understand the hard things. And He'll help you to obey the difficult things. And He'll bless you as you follow Him. Those disciples that stuck with Him, they were blessed. They got to know Him better. They got to have a relationship with Him. They will someday be in heaven with God. Those who walked away that day went, nah. I don't want to hear this anymore. Yeah, I don't know if I believe this. Yeah, I don't want to follow this or do this. They missed out. They missed out on Jesus. I don't want the same to happen to you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for your love for us and your goodness to us. Yes, some things in your word are hard to understand. Would you help us to trust you? Would you help us to obey you? Do you help us to follow you, Lord, and find in you the blessing? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, great to be with you guys today. Hope you're doing well. 
hope school is going well, hope up is going well, and I hope we get to see you here at the church for some of our activities that are coming up at the end of next month. We love you guys. We miss you guys. Take care. Bye.